So, so, so essentially today, um, how many of you know the, that Bloomix actually supports Docker? Right? Wow, a lot of you. Great. So, um, I've been recently just uh, playing around with Docker because uh, Bloomix, Bloomix on Docker just recently went out of uh, beta. And um, I'm new to Docker, so please, you know, spare me anything and teach me, oh senseis. Please teach me how to do Docker, but I'm going to show you very quickly on how to just uh, deploy something on Docker in Bluemix. And uh, maybe you guys can tell me a little bit more about how to do more things on, on Docker and some of your best practices and deployment techniques. And I think the next topic is DevOps, right? Using Docker. So I'll, I'll be learning something from there. Right? So anyway, so uh, I think the first things first, right, is uh, in order to get set up with Docker, you have to have the Bluemix account and all that. I, I assume you're going to... You know, if you want to play around with it, just do the registration and everything. So, um, the first things first is you need to install two, two command line tools, okay? Sorry, can you introduce yourself? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I forgot. Uh, I'm Justin Lee. I'm from, uh, I'm from IBM. I'm one of the uh, cloud technical evangelists uh, for IBM Cloud, essentially. So, that's me. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. Um, so there are two tools that you need to install on your Linux machine. Yes, sir. What is Bluemix? What, what is Bluemix? Okay. So Bluemix, Bluemix is a platform as a service that allows you to host, uh, uh, you know, your code and your Docker containers and pretty much... Oh, hi, yes. Actually, <laughs> very similar to AWS, uh, more similar to the, uh, the Beanstalk, uh, AWS Beanstalk. So that's what Bluemix is. Uh, very much more similar to Azure uh, uh, platform as a service. Okay, so but it's it, you know uh, one of the things that with Bluemix is is trying to bring in virtual machines, Docker containers, and all of that stuff. Right, uh, expanding its scope from beyond platform as a service. Right. Okay. So coming back, I apologize. Coming back. So there are two tools that you need to install. One is the Cloud Foundry CLI, which is the CF command line. And within the CF command line, after you've installed, it's quite simple. It's just you can just do a brew, or on uh, Linux, it's just a you know app get. And um, after you've installed the CF, the one thing, the next thing that you need to install is the IC tool. So essentially, it's a plugin. Let's see, install plugin, and um, all this all this URL and everything is in the documentation. But um, you just have to install the plugin for CF. Uh, in the documentation, there's actually another CLI for you, which is ICE, right? IBM Containers Extensions. The ICE file is, uh, or rather CLI, is going to be deprecated uh, in favor for this plugin. Okay, so this is something to note. Okay, so you just install this plugin and uh, very simply just do a CF login. By the way, I assume that you've already installed Docker because you need Docker to uh, do all of this stuff. And C CFIC is basically a wrapper around Docker. As simple as that. Okay, so first things first, you just have to do CF login with an endpoint api.ng.bluemix.net. CF is just a, a common open source platform, Cloud Foundry, right? Bluemix is just one of the implementations of the Cloud Foundry. All right, so I'm just going to do uh, sg.ibm.com, my password, which I hope I remember. And uh, you just log in. Um, and one of the things that, that you need to do, right, to take note of is when you actually create a Docker container, uh, you have to take note that there is only one space that you can create your Docker contain uh, your Docker images repository and Docker containers, everything in a single space. So if you are in if you are already in one space, and when you create the Docker environment within Bluemix, you are stuck there in that space. Okay, so that's one small little caveat. A space is essentially uh, an area of, uh, of, of development work, essentially, where all your instances reside in. Okay, so the one thing I created, I accidentally created, which I, because I didn't know about this caveat, is I did it in de development. I should have done it in production, but um, yeah, that's, that's something, something I learned. Uh, while doing this. So the other thing, right, um, after I've logged into Bluemix, I need to log into my container environment, which is CFIC login. 
And essentially what it's doing is just getting the client certificates and everything in order to connect to the Docker uh, registry and repository all in there. This is the basic setup in order for me to get Docker images into Phoenix. It's not the global, the central... No, no, this is, this is not the central rep uh, repository. Uh, from a registry perspective, this is the URL for uh, all the registries that are hosted under Bluemix. Then when you actually connect to the, the, the registry, right, you have to create a namespace, a specific namespace. Uh, so similar to what you do with uh, Hub, Docker and stuff like that, right? Uh, you have to create a namespace and whatnot. Um, so while it's authenticated... <laughs> um, so so <laughs> this, this is fun. Um, so what's happening is uh, it's authenticating and everything and... Um, what I go oh, there we go. So essentially, a lot of the Docker, uh, the Docker CLI commands um, is available uh, and it's wrapped under CFIC whatever. So I can do the same thing, CFIC PS minus A to see all my uh, running containers, which I have one running container over there. I can do a CFIC images to see all my images, okay? So very quickly, I'm just going to uh, get an image from, or rather copy an image from a, on the Hub Docker. Is it called Docker Hub or Hub Docker? Docker, Docker Hub. Docker Hub, okay. So I'm going to copy something from there and put it in my repository, right? So very simply, CF, IC, CPI, copy images. I'm going to copy HTTPD, is it? Uh, into my registry dot ng dot dot net slash ht one two three is my namespace. By the way, another caveat: once you selected a namespace, you cannot change the namespace. Okay, so that's the namespace. Uh, HTTPD. I'm gonna do that. It's sending the build context over. It's copying directly from uh, the Docker Hub repository into my uh, personal repository under HT123. Okay, so far so good. Uh, I've already done it because there, there is a few images already in there. So it's already in there, so I just do a CFIC images and I should see the HTTPD over there. Right? So I want to deploy it very quickly CFIC run minus p for the report registry.ng.bluemix.net slash um, ht123 slash httpd and very simply it's just a docker run right very similar docker run anything that's docker it just replace it with cf space ic all right um, this might take some time but let it run uh, in the meantime uh, there are various other uh, repositories available directly from the Bluemix. As you can see, there is the IBM Node Liberty, uh, the Liberty Web Sphere, uh, Mobile First Starter Kits, and stuff like that. But I usually don't use any of that. I just directly uh, create, uh, or rather, copy from the hub and create uh, my own instance. So let's take take a look at the instance CFICPS minus A. <coughs> Uh, it's over there, it's running. Okay, so you notice that under the ports, right, I haven't gotten an IP address yet. So 80, it's open in a port 80 slash TCP. I haven't got an IP address. So the next thing I need to do when you do this image, right, is to do an ICPS IP. Um, let's take a look at what I have, IP list. Okay, so I already have two IP addresses. In Bluemix, the limitation is you can only have up to two IP addresses uh, within the Bluemix container environment. So that's in caveat number three, okay? Uh, two IP addresses. If you need more, you need to request for more and pay for the IP addresses. So in order to request for the IP address, uh, it's IP, CFIC IP request, and also to release the IP address accordingly, okay? So I'm not going to release or anything like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bind the IP address here to my HTTPD 
instance over here, which is the container ID, or I can use the name, which is silly Stallman. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to bind it. And uh, after binding it, I should be able to access my Docker container, oh, successfully bind it, uh, through this IP address. Let's try. Cross fingers. It works! Yay! So, I mean, as simply as that, right? So, um, uh, this is this is this is something that we can quickly just do. The other thing that uh, I want to show, right, is a lot of people start from a Docker file, right? A Docker file. So uh, I don't have a, a a complete Docker file already available, but um, what you can do is this cf command ic um, build minus t registry uh, create your you know, uh, let's say IBM node image name, and then just do something like this with a Docker. It's gonna fail because I, I didn't I didn't manage to <laughs> complete this. All right. So uh, what it can do is it will upload the Docker file into the container, Bluemix container, and then it will start building the context there. All right. So I I didn't really complete that. So <coughs> ignore that. But that's how you do Docker file. Uh, de uh, deploy something from directly from the image itself and then you can start playing around with the docker within uh, Bluemix and that how many minutes I think five ten minutes that ends my presentation lightning talk any questions how do you scale how do you scale very good CFIC uh, if you take a look there is something called a group over there so instead of doing a run I, create, I do a group, I see group, where I can create, so I see group create a group of these instances. I specify the minimum number of instances, the maximum number of instances, the port and everything, and the load balancer is automatically created for you to scale. And how do you link containers? So basically by ports. Yes, uh, by the ports. So what you do is uh, essentially there is the IP address and you link it through, uh, you have to connect the external IP with the internal container. Uh, with just now what you saw, the CF IP bind. And the scale metrics is based on what? The scale metrics? Yeah, for example, if you go to 70% of run, which is, because you, it has some scale time. Ah yes, um, if I'm not wrong, it's based on memory usage, not the CPU usage. Even if your CPU is frying eggs, it's still... Um, the, 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 <laughs> the fun thing about Bluemix is that uh, CPU, get, CPU cycles get added on and on and on until a certain amount of CPU cycles and then it will say, you are a rogue instance, I'm going to shut you down. Right. So that's, that's essentially what, what's happening. Right, so um, if you if you have really huge amount of CPU uh, cycles, most probably the CPU cycles will correlate with the amount of memory you're using, and therefore it will increase accordingly. Or rather, that's that's theoretically what what they're saying. <laughs> yes, sir. Is there, is there like a nice web interface like to show? Uh, there is a nice web interface. However, everything I just showed you. Uh, pretty much, you still have to go back down to uh, uh, the, uh, the the uh, command line. Like, like, like you know, digital ocean as a, like a network graph. Yes. So, so if you notice over here, right, yeah, there is. Show me a network graph. Ah, uh, sorry. Just show me a network graph. No, I don't have a network graph or anything like that. But <laughs> I wish we were that advanced. You know, give 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 us a break. It just went out of beta like a, a week or two weeks ago. Oh, they're just icons, right? Right. So, so essentially. Essentially, right, all of this stuff over here. Um, so you have the default ones by IBM. You you you, you see over here, right? This one is part of the re uh, repository already, the registry. Uh, the additional ones over here, right? In order to add into the registry, you still have to go back down to command line to in include uh, into the registry over here, uh, either by building or copying from the hub, uh, Docker hub. So, to answer your question, yes, I agree with you. I'm shaking my head also. It is not an elegant solution uh, yet. <laughs> so ultimately, you still have to go down uh, to command line. But after you've added the image, right, 
uh, setting up everything, let's say for example, I've, uh, I've got this U-Track uh, from uh, JetBrains. You guys should know, uh, probably heard of U-Track. So um, I, actually, I actually copied the instance from the uh, Docker Hub. And this is a nicer interface of creating the instance, but honestly speaking, really, yeah, I know, right? But, um, and and let's talk money, let's talk business. Okay. Is it cheaper than Amazon services? Is the, is the network better than Wait, wait, wait. Is the I'm, network better than digital I, I'm not a salesperson. <laughs> let me get, let get that straight. Okay, so I, that, I mean, what, what, what is the like, selling point? Uh, like, is the network better? Um, is it a free pizza? Yeah, yeah, just free pizza, man. Free pizza. <laughs> okay, so so the selling point, the selling point is um, whatever you just see over here in terms of the, the, the payment, right? I'm not sure whether if uh, can I increase the uh, there you go. If you can see the pricing over there at the bottom, that's so numbers. that's the pricing. That's numbers. That's just numbers, yeah. So what's great about it? You tell me. You try it out and tell me. <laughs> Honestly speaking, is uh, for me at this point of time. Honestly speaking, right from tech, uh, geek to geek and tech to tech, right. Bluemix right now for the Docker containers is very rudimentary. Uh, it will get there eventually. We are still building it out, so uh, it's really really new on Bluemix. We are still getting, we are still building out a lot of the capabilities. Uh, but at this point of time, it is rudimentary and it is for just hosting your images. Like, like for example, what, what, what basis are they charging for public IP addresses? Is it like a month? Or is that a year? Sorry? Like two point per month. Per month. Per month. What about, what about, oh, okay, I see the bandwidth. Yeah, per month. So two static public IPs free for each month and an additional IP address for $2.14 US dollars. So that's the price. Yeah, I know. I, I know. I, I know. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, for example, if you want to use the internal, you don't need external IP address. Yeah. So usually, what uh, what people do, right, is that you have one external IP address, and then you reroute it to multiple uh, containers, and anything that's communicated within the container itself has their own internal IP address. Well, you use a type of group. Right? Yeah. Correct. Are you giving out free credits? Am I giving out free credits? Uh, there is 30 days free trial for unlimited usage, and there is always a uh, there is a free tier. Porn site. <laughs> Let's hold <laughs> port. <laughs> do you have a, wait? Wait. Do you have a Docker image for that? <laughs> I can make. I, can I just show you my demo? You just upload the. All right. You, you know what? You know what? Make make. Kai, make an account. I'll give you a few. I'll give you a few more days of free trial. We'll just do it there and load it in. How about that? Mm. That's a potential business there. Any questions? Do we have Singapore hosting? No, we don't have Singapore hosting at the Oh, yeah, 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 come on! <laughs> um, so, so, we don't have Singapore hosting at this point of time. We have a US, we have US hosting and UK hosting. We don't have an A. I know, right? We don't have an AP hosting at this point of time. AP would be coming uh, hopefully by the end of this year uh, in Hong Kong. What? Yeah, so I. Do 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 do. Do you know? In, internally, I've been really, really like lobbying for Singapore. Okay, I've been lobbying for Singapore for like the last six months, trying to get a, a instance in Singapore. But yeah. It is exactly. I don't understand why they're not deploying it in Singapore. So IBM owns software, isn't it? Sorry, IBM owns software. Exactly. I have absolutely no idea. We are, man. We are rocking. I should be moving to another company now, right? <laughs> Anybody hiring? <laughs> Alright, um, any other questions? Do you have machine integration? Huh, sorry? Do you have Docker machine integration? Docker machine integration, I have not tried it yet. <coughs> I am not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, yes, there's someone in behind, yes. Well, what, what is Docker machine integration? It's, you, uh, can, you can basically create uh, a VM. VMs in, in Amazon, Google Cloud, and then host the Docker. 
And they have like basically like that. Yeah. To, to, to create a Docker image. Yeah, you do a Docker like machine. Docker host. We so it's for basically morons who can't. Yeah. Run a host. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, we do provide Bluemix as a service completely. Um, is it mature enough? Is it? Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> you know the tough questions, sir. Uh, <laughs> is it mature enough? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it for I'll, I'll leave it for after this presentation is over. Yes. Do they have any APIs, for example, that can be used? Yep, uh, what APIs? What do you mean by For example, by? if I want to include all this creation with the CF, what you did, for example, importing and exporting containers running them, I want to create an application mm -hmm. and basically interface directly with the Bloomer, with the Bloomix. So if you are Yeah, it's some API to. What do you mean? Sorry, I don't understand the question. Example, API? If you provide any API, they can interface my application directly with the Bloomix services. To do what? Depending on what my application wants to do. So I want, for example, create a solution for GUI for my company it was to upload everything. Now use. Oh, oh to, to, to do all of that stuff? Yeah. yeah. So with uh, basically with Cloud Foundry, all the APIs are HTTP, uh, HTTP REST APIs. So it can be used? It can be used. Uh, but you have to go check the uh, configurations. Uh, a, a, uh, yeah, it depends. So there is there is um, there is a service called API management. If you have exist if you have existing APIs that you want to expose uh, out to the web. So, but we're not talking about Bluemix. We're talking about Docker. Stop it! Stop it! We're talking about Docker. <laughs> Okay, so with that, sorry, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if, if you want to know more about Bluemix, then come for my meetup, then, you know, my Bluemix meetup, okay? So with that, thank you very much. I'm so sorry to take too much of your time. And I, I hope you guys uh, explore it. If you have any questions or anything, uh, if you find something interesting that doesn't work, let me know. <laughs>